So if you follow along with the channel at all, you'll uh, notice in a real short time that I'm pretty passionate about talking about the uh, transition areas, how they, they fit to a property, why I think they're so important to, uh, you know, to really understand what a transition area is and what you're trying to accomplish by building a transition area. So like I had talked in the past, you know, it's uh, one of the disconnects that I see on properties that, uh, you know, that I visit is that that have been worked on by the private landowners before or have hired another consultant is there's just missing you know there's some missing links and and sometimes you know i've seen uh you know great designs and they there's just not that finished touch that i i like to do as far as tying those things together you know so um so what we're going to talk about today is just that is a transition area is you know as you can see behind me we're on the uh, hillside here. This is actually the uh, the home farm that we did a bunch of that work on last year. And, you know, this area is one of those perfect examples are I have contoured to work with here on this uh, location here at the house farm. And, uh, you know, you have to promote that line of travel. So obviously I have the uh, the food plot that we made last year down below. It wraps around the, the hill, uh, the ridge here. Wraps right around, goes through the uh, bed, bedding area that we're going to inspect here in a minute with you. Wraps right around and ties right into that uh, plot down below. So obviously, talking about that, you know, any time that you've got food down below, you're going to have bedding up above. You've got food up above, you're going to have, you know, you know, bedding down below. So with that said, um, we just, you know, the, the wide open timber aspect is it's so powerful to, to be able to, um, you know, place that debris on the ground. But where do you place it? You know, like I said, it's uh, if you follow along, you'll you'll see that that is pretty. Uh, that transition area ties the pieces of the puzzle together for me, and that's why I feel so passionate about bringing that stuff to you guys. So today, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through this area that I I uh, created last year here in the home farm, and you know, there's uh, there's many properties around, obviously, that have this uh, done on it that the that the, my clients have taken this and really you know made this real profitable for them. But, you know, like I've said in the past on my videos, guys, when I'm on my client properties, unless I go back for a revisit and I just happen to have a cameraman, my son, or, or a hired camera um, with me, I'm not focused on, you know, stopping and videoing everything. We're there to, to uh, get that project uh, created and that design done. So a lot of that stuff doesn't, you know, ever hit, uh, you know, the YouTube channel or something. So today I'm home. I'm actually in between uh, client trips here. And obviously, as you can see, it's it's a never-ending deal for me, just like it is a lot of you. When I'm home, I'm either out on my my uh, uh, my home property, uh, or you know, this morning before I came out, I was uh, answering emails from clients that are uh, now on the books for this year. And uh, you know, so when we leave here, right back out into the whitetail woods on your property. So uh, let's take a walk here, and I'll show you. And we're gonna do a little talk and walk here, and I'll show you kind of you know, there's always that question that arises: is can you really explain to me josh you know you, you know you touched on it and i and i read that in your handbook and stuff but can you show me or can we talk this through on this transition and the big deal is debris you know debris can be uh your best friend or debris can be your worst enemy so you know the the uh the rule is here guys that we need to focus on is going back sounds like a broken record but i'm hoping that uh you know when i say this it starts resonating with you you want to go back and really make sure that those hinge hingeable areas are not in front of your tree stand locations, which are in them transition areas. Just make sure that that's you know depending on your contour, you might be able to start hinging 50 yards from your tree stand. You know, place your stand is in the center, your tee and into your your transition is you know right to left in front of you out at that 25 yard mark. You got your scrape in front of you. So from that point of impact, you know 75 yards each way. It's just your buffer 100 yards. If it's flat and open, then it's 100 yards. If you got contour that divides it, or a, or a uh, you know a, a bench or something that rolls around, or a ridge end that rolls around, hogback ridge that you can tuck those deer around when that transition area bends, then obviously you can you can tuck those bedding areas closer, and that just puts you in the chips. You know, I'm not one of those guys that are gonna design or tell you to you know create a buck bed uh, bedding area and hang, especially not those, but let's say a buck bedding area. Uh, you know hinge cut those areas even if it doesn't turn into a tornado effect which I see a lot of but you know hang a tree stand right on the back side of it and the reason that is is yes it's a powerful uh, it's a powerful uh, spot to sit to you know to uh, ambush a buck coming back to his bed the problem with it is it's like a food source it's like hunting a food source to me because once they're there 
and that buck let's say it is that buck that uh, you're trying to harvest and he beds on the other side of it or there's debris um, because obviously it's not a shooting lane situation at that point and he beds on the other side of it well you're either there for the entire day then you got to take into consideration your thermals your wind change and what I see most of though is people just uh, try to get out of the stand and they get busted and you blow that spot well when you blow that those spots those are the interior really really crucial spots so it's very, very, uh, very, very crucial that you don't blow those out. The only way you're gonna not blow them out is to not be sitting on them. So that's why I really focus is to get as close as, you know, close to those bedding areas as you can. So that's why we hinge cut on these transition areas. If you're one of the clients that, you know, we've worked on, uh, designed here yet this year, already this year or in the past years, you'll see that uh, I'm, I'm, really, um, I'm really passionate about that. I even go to the extent of putting it like a hazard orange sign around one of the, the tree stands on a hunt stand so you click on it and it says warning do not hinge cut within this area so um, but like I said ridge country you know you can get closer to it makes that rut stand even more, more powerful because you're closer to the bedding but you can get out so let's take a walk I'll show you down through here what we did this has got beach it's got a lot of soft uh, maple that we had in here we had a few oaks that we took down you know this is a uh, this is actually part of a farm that we used to own the entire 120 acres of it here and it's a beautiful, beautiful maple, hard maple stand. Um, this has been cut numerous, numerous times over the years. And I'd hate to thank the board footage, that, the board footage that's been taken off this. So this is right next to the, the solid 12 that I own now. Um, I've only got 12 of it left out of the 120. And uh, so we sold that years ago. My, my father, you know, sold that years ago. And, and, uh, but it's a, it's a powerful piece. And, uh, but as you can see, I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna turn the camera. You can see 150 to 200 yards through it. It's solid TSI powerful property but needs some habitat aspect tied to it so we're going to take a walk today i'm going to show you what uh, what i did last year and just kind of explain to you along the way of you know this uh the ins and outs and we're going to look at some of them uh just the stump jump that, that i call it the regeneration that has happened off them stumps you know this year now that the, the sunlight is going to hit to it i already see the little the little growth coming off the the trunks of the trees that are down at deer you know at head level now and uh, so this place is really gonna you know turn into something but it's uh it's one of those pieces that it's just over the top of the hill from my house actually and it starts right here the transition area starts on this ridge system ties it around and before we get to the blind it's actually a bedding area and then we wrap around right into the food plot so small parcel uh you know big deer mentality small parcel trying to pack this, these uh, critters in on these spots you can do it so when i say center lines on transition areas you you pretty much you know depending on your canopy you have to be able to read the canopy if you've got a mature canopy that's all the same uh growth or the same age and it's all it's all canopied off with large oak or large hard maple and oak like it's in here um you really have to do is you have to be able to judge that like do i cut it um do i cut it open 20 feet wide do I cut it open five? So the rule of rule is this, is that if you have your mature canopy above you and it's an open TSI stand look and you're putting a transition area through it tied with your contour, it's up to 20 feet. And what I say up to 20 feet, the more the mature the timber is, you have to open it up to 20 feet because if you don't open it up to 20 feet, that sunlight cannot penetrate into that area where you need that center, uh, you need the center of your transition area to uh, regenerate into that woody browse as that movable food and then what you get is if it's not wide enough you don't get the you don't get the growth on the outside of it as well the idea is to have the the transition to be uh you know full of browse and it to go out to the outside so you've got that you know that five six eight feet on the outside so that gives you edge and then obviously your stand locations are just on the outside of it and you can reach across you know if they're 20 feet wide and it's 20 foot from the stand you know that makes it that 35 40 yards to the furthest point across from it so it's a really powerful deal but you know some of the questions that i have arise here and we'll talk about as we go is you know what what do you uh you know how how wide do you open that what do you do with the debris well all the debris is we start in a 90 and like i said you always you always tip those on a 90 degree angle to the outside if you're able and you're in an area where there's not a stand around then obviously we're hinge cutting those down the down the way if you're not if you're getting tight to your to your stands then obviously what i call kill, kill cuts is you're flush cutting those but the debris is still to the outside but before you can do the hinge cutting and before you can do any of that um you know your hinging or your kill cuts to the outside you have to have that center lane because if you don't what's happened is is you go in the center and you just start tipping the trees to the outside 
and you don't have that solid, it's, it's too much of a maze. So what I'd like to do is I like to open that out. So start with the center line. If you are in a situation in mature timber like this is here, uh, you have to open that up 20 feet. Well, 20 feet sounds extreme, but 20 feet, if you're standing in the center, that's only 10 foot out each way. So that's only, you know, just, just almost as far as you can reach out both sides, that's 20 feet, you know, so it's, it's not as a, as a wide open spectrum as 20 feet sounds. And like I said, the reason that I know that is I've, I've learned the hard way. You know, I used to make them, you know, uh, small, and then I just kept over the years getting to that spot where 20 foot is the, um, you know, up to 20 feet, depending on, like I said, your canopy is the, is the ticket to have. And, uh, you know, that all gets cut out of the center. You physically have to, you know, cut the trees down, have it logged. That's what it's good about having me or, or someone in before that to lay that out for you is because, you know, you can follow that, that trail. Your loggers can follow that trail. Anything on that center line and 10 foot to the outside can be taken. So you clear all of it out. Yes, you're going to have the debris of the, uh, of the tops and stuff, but that can all be drug out uh, to the outside, you know, scattered to the outside. And then you come back through and then you start doing your kill cuts. So by doing that, you have, now you have that up to 20 foot uh, swath on your transition area, then you have your kill cuts. And then now you're talking, now now you're gaining a lot of sunlight to that area in, in the right spots. And uh, like I said, then we get to the buck bedding situations, you know, that's a, that 20 to 30 foot circle that we open up and uh, you know we plant some spruce trees in and that all gets tied back to the points of impact as you'll see on my designs but um, like I said let's go for a walk here and we'll see and we'll inspect these as we go I'll show you some of the regeneration that's coming and uh, you'll kind of get a, a feel for it now as you see there's no I mean this thing was loaded I'll show you the pictures from before this fall this thing was loaded with uh, deer sign um, you know in the fall and now because of the winter conditions and because we just don't have you know I'm actually going to come back through here and we're going to do some more work in this area this year uh, so this is down below this is up above above us you know this starts the transition so you can see the transition goes right up through here and makes the bend right there and they're all tipped to the outside coming down so but as you can tell that's right on my property line here and so I've got all this mature timber up above and in theory I just don't have the room to do it in this spot but as we go down the hill we do because this is on my property line but I mean if we own both sides of this um, what you need to do is that's this is that 20 foot you know mark this is that center line that goes up through there it's 20 foot each way now you can see now you've got this hole that you're you're creating in the canopy this all the way down through this transition area all the way around would be open and all these trees would be tipped to the outside so now you have you're not pinching them down in the center but you're giving them all this browse regeneration in the center and all this debris is to the outside all funneling right down here making what we have uh you know created here so yes these are small hinge cuts i've had that question on this property you know this spot like what am i doing here but this is just one of those areas as you're trans transitioning through here you know um this is just an open open spot right here and these were here so you know you can hinge cut there's not a certain size where you you can't obviously the larger the tree is you know the, the more hinge cutting you have to uh, take into consideration they get too big obviously they're not hingeable trees at that point but you know you can see here's a perfect example that was you know that was cut late la late last summer uh, a good hinge right here and all the way down the, the tree you can see that they've actually already browsed that all this has regenerated from from just just this year this is all new and that's why these are low obviously like you know you can see this is hip high with me and it's all all this this whole thing is going to just uh you know explode that's actually a uh, red uh red oak there so uh so we're going to transfer down the hill here So this in here, because of my, my uh, sunlight, obviously I've got this big producer right here, this big red oak, but all the way around this spot, my canopy is pretty, you know, pretty open. And uh, like I said, we're gonna come down this year. I'm gonna tip these beach out of the way. I just ran out of time uh, last year. So this is, uh, um, this is, you know, what it looks like just on a, uh, like I said, it's not on a uh, finished, um, totally finished deal. I just, like I said, I was on the road last year and and run out of time and we were doing this kind of as training not so much um you know the the uh, huntable portion of it but obviously we hunted it and it worked 
it just uh, we just need to add to it so you know this transfers down the hill here we go now we're picking up some tracks so this is the you know all tipped here these are you can see I went up and knocked them beach down them are actually killed cut beach because it was so it was so big right on the, the slope here and then I've got the bench system that's down on the bottom that's a natural blow down down there but we're gonna like I said we're gonna come back and add to this um, but this is gives you the feel guys of what you know hinging to the outside you know all your hingeable stuff this year we're just gonna come back through and we're gonna we're gonna do another segment on you know opening it up again so whoever ends up you know purchasing this uh, this this place here is gonna be you know just benefit from all of this but um, like I said I'll, I'll show you the videos from earlier in the year um, you know all these deer here I just don't have the holding power uh, as you know two of my neighbors have I have two large large parcels on the outside and I just don't have that uh, that holding power when the when the uh, winter conditions but this is a issue I mean this is a situation right here how to maintain them this is all fell down from the winter wind wind damage across it so now this is all you know uh, shut off so you can see you can see guys um, as we we'll walk back up the hill here you can see you know you can kind of get that feeling on how this how this looks all this uh, debris to the outside you know kill cuts versus uh, your uh, your hinge so now we're back up top and like I said you know this is on my property line so I brought this up here just as far as I could and uh, if we would still own this like we had obviously you know did in the past this would be the perfect the perfect spot to show you just how powerful that you know promoting that uh, transition area would be as you can see guys you know reading this contour this this slope this TSI you can see for 200 yards I mean that's it's kind of deceiving in the camera that's 200 yards down to the bottom of that slope I mean I can see three four hundred yards out there if we look but because of the contour up through here uh, and the red there the orange ribbon right here is my property line so on the old property the you know reading this contour and if we were able to enhance this you can just imagine a bench in here you know a quarter the way off the top a bench in here that wind you know taking advantage of the, the deer movement on them leeward sides of these ridges coming in cutting these benches in here going all the way you know through using the contour you know bringing those transition areas in and out all the way around and all of this all you know the center line of that all cut out 20 feet wide and like I said you start looking in the trees now and you take 20 foot out of this all the way down through there and open that up all of this debris to the outside after that is cleared out you can really tell in the, this situation is this it's actually really the perfect hingeable trees is because you know it's not um, it's just one of those parts of the uh, property that just you know doesn't have that high high uh, timber value and by doing it you know you're not losing uh, you're not losing as much of the value as as the uh, you know that kind of that um, if you're not doing TSI you're you're ruining your your land theory and you know that couldn't be further from the truth uh, because you're leaving a lot of that uh, mature timber the object is, is to leave that mature timber in those areas where you can continue to select cut uh, on the outside rim and uh, in those areas that you can get into and uh, don't become a food source so you can get in and out of the farm to hunt so you're it's not like you're destroying your you're not going through and kill cutting and just leaving you know trees laying all over the place and and uh, hinge cutting you know like some of the uh, the uh, foresters and the loggers will tell you and they they uh, cringe at wildlife management but as you can see this is a situation right here perfect example behind me here in mid michigan that powerful piece just kind of you know set aside you know this look behind us is what i see a lot of and like i said the reason that we're doing this this video today is just to show you guys you know just that is is uh take this tsi look turn it into a uh, you know turn it into a transition area into deer habitat and stuff we just walked through is the way you know way it looks at the end and like i said you know what i have here is nowhere near the product that we could be using over here to transfer these deer past and uh, so that's why I feel so strongly about these transition areas guys I really encourage you to to uh, follow along on those 
if you have any questions reach out um, the clients that we are working on or have worked on in the past are all benefiting from this it's just uh, like I you know I say there's just a few few pieces of the puzzle that you know I get questions on a lot or that uh, folks aren't um, you know folks aren't um, you know quite understanding is it really 20 feet wide I think that uh, you know that that spooks people a little bit you know saying you got to cut a 20 foot a 20 foot wide swath all the way through your property or around the outside of your property and uh, and I understand that but if you understand the theory by read, reading the the uh, canopy and why you have to up to 20 foot wide to get that you know get that uh, sunlight transferred to that uh, that floor it'll all make sense and once you see it done you uh as a private landowner if you have the opportunity to do that you'll never hunt your farm anywhere else or any any other way um then enhancing these then enhancing these areas that we call transition areas you know transferring those deer from bed to feed and uh, being able to get in out of those stand locations not hinge cutting in front of the tree stands again and uh so that that is the reason that we do it that's the power of transitions guys um don't uh, you know don't read into it any further than you have to make it make sense get the design done put the transitions where they need to be hinge cut and kill cut to the outside and sit back and enjoy it for years to come